Now today we're talking about how to test EGR valves, specifically the old vacuum type EGR valves versus the newer harness connected computer operated EGR valves. And they're quite easy to do. There are two really techniques in terms of testing these. The first thing right off the bat to test these vacuum type EGR valves. You find this on your early 70s up to your late 90s, maybe even early 2000s vehicles. There's a diaphragm inside here. If the diaphragm starts to leak, then the valve is bad. But how do you test that? The best thing you can do is purchase a vacuum tester. Not only can you test for vacuum, you can bleed your own brakes, which we've done with this exact tool in a separate video. You can do a lot of automotive maintenance. They are absolutely terrific. I'll include a link if you want to purchase one of these. Uh, Amazon, your local auto parts store, they all have it. But let's say you don't have the vacuum tester, you don't want to spend the $40. There's a, a flip side, at least on these older type valves. And the way that you do it is you start the vehicle and you rev the engine around two to 4,000 RPMs and place your hand on the valve, if you can. Sometimes they're a little difficult to, to get access to. But as you rev the engine, there's a little valve in here that moves up and down if the valve is working correctly. So have the rev again, two, 4,000 RPMs, and you should feel the valve move up and down, okay? But really the best thing you can do is get yourself one of these vacuum testers. Now let me just reposition the camera here. Now we will test this valve in a running vehicle, but I just want to show you what it looks like because on the vehicle that we're using, it's a little tough to see the, the EGR valve. It's underneath the air box, so this gives you a clear view of what the vacuum type looks like. They all essentially look the same. They all have the same shape in a sense. Now all that we're doing is applying vacuum to this valve, and we want to see if the needle holds, okay? If it holds, that's a very good sign, and then we'll test it when the vehicle is running, okay? If the, if the needle here does not hold, or it's not holding vacuum in other words, then the valve, the diaphragm inside is bad and it needs to be replaced. It's just that simple. Okay, so let's apply some vacuum here. So as you can see, it's holding vacuum. So this EGR valve is in good shape. You can also let it sit like this for maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, just make sure that's not losing pressure. If you see something like this, when you do your test, or even maybe something like this, you know, it's just not holding the vacuum, a very, very good indication that the valve is bad. Now let's also test the valve when the vehicle is running. So here we have a 1997 Maxima, and the reason why I was showing you that earlier, that EGR valve a moment ago, is because there's no way I can show you where this valve lives and, and videotape it at the same time. It's just, it's too cramped. But what we're going to do is the exact same test. We'll apply the vacuum to that valve, see if it holds, and then we'll start the vehicle, apply vacuum, and the car should start to run rough. So now I have the vacuum tester hooked up directly to the EGR valve. We'll apply some vacuum. And as you can see, the needle is holding, so that's a very good sign. So now I'll start the vehicle and do the exact same test. And the car should start to run uh, poorly hesitate, it may even stall. And if that happens, that's a very good indication that the valve is working. Okay. Okay, here we go. Right away, you can hear the RPMs decrease. It's starting to, almost sounds like it's, it's missing a little bit. And there you go. The car's just running very, very poorly. Now if I release the pressure, there you go. I'll do it one more time. And that's all it takes to test a vacuum type EGR valve. It's very, very simple to do. The flip side of that is if you're getting an EGR code and the EGR valve is fine, you can also remove the valve and test the passages, make sure that they're not clogged up. But chances are, if you're doing this test, this will pinpoint if that valve is working correctly or not. Now let's jump over to a late model vehicle, which does not use a vacuum. Now in late model vehicles, you may find something like this. As you can see, there's no vacuum input, but you have a harness connector. And the question becomes, how do you test something like this? Well, very simply, with a multimeter. If you don't have a multimeter, you can purchase one of these from Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, your local auto parts store. $20, $25, but you need to do a resistance reading, which is known as an ohms test. Now, ohms 
is this omega symbol right here. So you just turn to that symbol, which you see it's right here. Now the reading we should see here is around 22, 24, uh, can be in be 20 ohms. Now the reason, or how I know that, is because I did a little research. So in other words, just do a little web uh, research on your vehicle. Very often you can pick them up pretty quickly and uh, also check forms specific for your car. A lot of times you can pick them up. But lastly, you can always purchase the repair manual for your vehicle. In other words, a, in this case, a Subaru repair manual. And that's what the technicians use to uh, repair the car. But once you dig up that info, right here where your thumb is, there's a tab, you push down the tab, push back the harness connector, and then you have six terminals in this case. So we're going to test a couple different terminals. Make sure we're getting around, again, 20 to 24 ohms should be our uh, a pretty good number. So again, you take your leads. In this case, I'll start with number five and number four. And all that you're doing is taking leads from the multimeter and just touching the terminals. Very, very simple and quick test. And there you go, 24 ohms. So this is working correctly. Again, let's also do number six and five. A little difficult. And there you go, 24 ohms. You can also do the top terminals. So let's try number three and number two. Twenty-four ohms, and also number two and number one. There you go, twenty-four ohms. So again, something like over a hundred thousand ohms, or just no reading here whatsoever. It's a very, very good sign that the valve is bad. If you do need to replace it, typically there's just two bolts holding it on. You remove the bolts, swap it out. It's usually very, very easy. Let's also do this on an O3 Honda, and uh, we'll wrap it up. Now on this O3 Accord. This is where the EGR valve lives. Again, right here is a tab. Push down the tab, pull back on the harness connector here. Now the reading for Honda, quite interesting. If the reading is over 100,000 ohms, then the EGR valve needs to be replaced. So it's just that simple. Over 100,000 ohms, replace it. Under 100,000 ohms, you're okay. So let me show you how we do it in this case. So on this Honda, we're going to test terminals one and two. And if you take a look at the multimeter, on the top right-hand corner of the number 8, you see the letter K. And that stands for kilo. So we're at 1.4 kilo ohms. So kilo is 1,000. So 1 1.4 times 1,000 is 1,400. So we're, under, we're well under 100,000 ohms. So 1,400 ohms, that's a good reading. And then terminals 1 and 3, we're at... 3,800 ohms. So we're well below that 100,000 ohms, and this is in good shape. So that's how you test these. As you can see, it's fairly simple. These electronic ones are very, very quick. And if you do need to replace it, usually against two bolts, swap it out, and that's it. So I hope this helps someone out there. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.